people say, yeah, but this hand is so beautiful. Well, there's just a number. It just stands for a number, nothing more. Those cards, the beautiful six, five and hearts, is just the front end of the back end, the number, the equity. What is up everyone and welcome to a very interesting topic. I had this topic already for quite some time in mind. I mean, this question comes a lot up in our channels when we discuss and debate strategies. When, when, when do we want to follow GTO and when do we want to follow <clears throat> a more exploitative approach? And I have pre prepared some sims for you where we, we are going to be looking explicitly into the EVs. And I know there has been some discussion going around on, on social media on yeah whether we want to be playing a GTO approach or whether we want to be playing exploitive strategy. And in this video, I really want to debunk the myth of yeah that there is only one strategy and you're supposed to follow GTO. You're going to be losing a lot of EV. I've been running these sims now, of course, um, for you guys and something where we where i've conceived the term masterclass ranges in a way where first of all i think it will maximize your profit it um, serves you in a, in a in a way that it's uh it's, it's the best possible ranges against the population you need to understand that with gto the assumptions we make is that our opponents play play perfect and that's definitely not the case also we need to admit that we have certain weaknesses in our game as well right so we're going to take a look and i want to kick it off here with the big blind versus cutoff range from the term master class where uh, my approach is favorite a little more towards the the suited connectors um which yeah can certainly be debated about um so let's have a look in to the range that Cutoff is supposed to open raise and what is he supposed to defend. So very basic, nothing so spectacular. We have the um, pink hands or pinkish hands marked as cards and the violin hands want to go all in with. Makes a lot of sense against a very polarizing big blind strategy. You want to be calling aces and kings quite frequently and even ace queen suited we see uh, wants to pure call. So now the question becomes, um, if we look into the GTO response, we see that the solver actually favors off-suited combinations, which from a theoretical standpoint make a lot of sense. We block ace-queen, we block queens, we want to flop more often stronger top pairs. But now let's look at the EVs where we combine, first of all, a 7-6 suited with a hand like queen-8 off. And is it really that big of a difference? So if we look into 7-6 suited, and we have the EVs around here. So first of all, to help you understand those numbers, is that we have a big blind of 1,000. So 1,000 chips the big blind. And you might be confused, especially if you're new into this kind of GTO stuff, that we're always going to be losing money here on average because we pay the big blind. If we fold, you see minus 1000, which is the big blind. It makes a lot of sense. So whenever we lose less than 1000, we want to prefer that option over the fold. Makes a lot of sense. So we see here calling, we only lose 0 0.36 big blinds. Three betting, we lose around minus uh, 0 0.4 big blinds. If we now look at the difference though, between these two. The V difference is very, very marginal. So basically, we um, make 0 0.04 BB more with three biting. That's very tiny. So now let's look into Queen 8 off. Oh, sorry, that's 7-6 suited. Where is queen 8 off? So here we go. Here's queen 8 off. So if we look at queen 8 off right here, um, we see that, of course, overall, queen 8 off suited is a little less attractive to defend. And to 3-bet, we actually 
um, we always want to compare because now you see that we actually with both options we lose 0.7 big blinds whether three betting or calling um so seven six suited is still clearly the more profitable play here and funny enough though is if we look at the ev difference here um and you will see sims where the ev might be a little higher but you already see that it's very identical even if it if you might see sims it also depends on how long you let it run and I know the solves might run with different algorithms or different setups, so you might see sims where maybe the difference is 0 0.05 or maybe perhaps even 0 0.15, uh, 0 0.15 big blind, so a little bit more. However, the point remains that also we see here the V between calling and three betting. And if anyone is trying to tell you that we have to pick queen eight off or we have to pick king six off or what else is marked as high frequency three bet or 10 seven off, he is simply lying to you. So, and the next argument that speaks for three betting a hand like 7600, again, this comes with the assumption you reach the EVs that you played perfect. Now, question to you, and you can pause the video and think about it, and you can also let me know in the comments. What do you think? Where are you going to be doing more mistakes with pro pre flop, a uh, post flop? A hand like queen five off, or queen eight off, or king four off, whatever the solver likes to um, three bet, or king six off, king seven off. What do you think is going to be easier played post flop? Seven six suited, eight six suited, like four five suited, or those hands? All right? So, this is something you need to consider as well. I personally, I can speak only from my experience and the students I have had, and I would say that these hands, uh, you have to find way more natural, uh, way more unnatural bluffs, because you're not going to be hitting a draw if you don't hit your king. It's very, very um, difficult for you to identify those second birds. I'm not saying you should not study those, and you should just lean back. Well, it's so difficult. I'm only going to be three winning the pseudo connectors because they're easy to play. No. However, even though if you reach that level where um, you're never going to be playing perfect, but you're going to be close to the optimum. It's still the difference is very, very minimal. And remember the podcast I had with Pats where we're talking about these where you gain solely EV for an enormous amount of studying and we should try to simplify. All right. I'm also mentioning this a lot in the course, of course, that I'm telling you not everything is GTO. If you look at some other ranges, um, it's closer to GTO because I think it also makes a lot of sense and they're easier to play. If you look at the under the gun ranges, for example, we are three betting more of these suited Jack-8 suited type of fans and some suited aces in certain spots, which is totally fine. And I would say, yeah, that's also much easier to play and makes a lot of sense what GTO wants us to do. But especially big blind or blinds versus late position, I think that people are going to do more, making more mistakes with a hand like Jack-8 of three betting. So that also ultimately will directly correlate with the EV pre Preflop, uh, three betting this very hand where in reality you're not going to be um, making minus 7.34 you might be making minus 8 point whatever or minus 9 point whatever it's still better than folding though but you're not i don't in my opinion not going to be reaching those evs in reality so because simply the preflop uh, the preflop caller in this case that has the position has the position on you plus also has much easier decisions with his over range. He's going to be having hands like queen jack suited, king 10 suited, some traps. Yeah, and good luck playing against that. So yeah, you need to also be very bossy and find those bluffs. That's very often just going to be some really random bluffs, some very unnatural bluffs. And when you're not experienced with that, you're going, you're not going to reach those EVs. And that means for you, just calling it preflop, keeping the pot small, trying to hit something is going to making your money. And there are tr some smart people that, you know, especially from the with cash game background, might jump in. Yeah, we need to play uh, more uh, GTO approach preflop. We want to simplify and also we want to have certain playability in reality. That's just how it is. All right. And they also certainly if someone wants to play that style and think it suits him better, I would never say that's wrong. There is room to adjust or yeah, to adjust to wherever you feel comfortable playing and where you have studied the most. That we that's something we also need to take into consideration. So have however, so if we look into the um, frequencies that our opponents are supposed to uh, apply, we see that according to GTO, let's 
pull it over here. So we see that the solver wants us to defend, actually you can't see it here, but I can tell you, uh, defend around 50% of the times. Uh, actually, I have it over here. Yeah, we see it over here. So the solver wants to yeah, fold around 50% of the time. So how does population play in that spot with that stack size? Let's have a look. So as I already mentioned in one of my previous YouTube videos, I just, I'm just currently doing a, a database analysis and let's have a look how low stakes population. So $15 and less is playing the spot. So we see at 25 big blinds to 40 big blinds, four to three bet in position, which is against the blind 60%. And also 40 to 60 big blinds, it's 55. So if we take it in between, we, or we can build the average for 40 big blinds, it's the four to three is probably gonna be somewhere around 57, 58%. So seven to 8% more folding than actually the solver wants us to fold. How is it for the mid stakes population? Up to, uh, I think 100 or $200, I'm not 100% sure. Um, similar same speed here it's a little lower of course it's around 55 percent and also for the high stakes population it's a little higher than what the solver is actually doing so but i think now for our audience it's more important to um that we focus on low stakes and mid stakes i think that's the average viewer is playing these stakes and again I would say that this approach with the pseudo connectors is even also more suitable on higher stakes. Again, unless you have studied these spots in depth and you find these very unnatural barrels, you're not gonna be having a draw all the time. I mean, if you hit your queen or if you hit your king, it's gonna be much easier, but often it's gonna be ace high board or 10 high board, and you just sit there with an overcard, no back doors, and you still need to find those barrels. So let's look into, if we make just a slight adjustment, and honestly, Based on my opinion, I find this already quite sticky. I don't think, again, pause the video for yourself. Think about if this is a realistic range, especially when the tournament is not at the very early stage. This is something I'm also advising. You don't necessarily need to do so much bluff three betting in the early stages. Sometimes people are more stickier, but especially when it goes gets more like the mid game, you know, the, it approaches the bubble soon. Then I don't think people are going to be calling a hand like king six or king seven suited here. They might not find all these four bit jams here with king jack, king queen suited, jack ten suited, queen jack suited, some lower pairs, ace two suited. So what we did is we amended it a little bit. So we see we reduced the frequencies of four bit jamming. There's still a decent amount of four bit jams in there. I also think people rather four bit jam a hand like ace five suited over ace two suited. Um, since our opponent is three bit bluffing more often a hand like king five off and queen five off with a low frequency, it makes some sense actually to four bit jam ace twos, ace three suited kind of hands. But I think just naturally, I feel like people see this ace five suited as a standard four bit jam. And also jamming more often kings here and there, mixing in some slow plays makes a lot of sense. And also, yeah, jamming those ace queen offs very, very frequently. Uh, and then also jamming more often those, yeah, tens and nines. I'm not sure how it was in the previous sim. Yeah, there's nines calling more often, but I think, yeah, nines might just be ripped more often than, uh, than in GTO. But overall, also a little less defending. I don't think people are gonna be defending here king 10 off, even king jack off calling folding 50%, queen jack off calling folding 50%. Even queen eight suited, king eight suited, those hands that the solver actually wants to call. I think people are, yeah, again, this is more realistic now. The solver wants to fold, yeah, around 55% to the 60%, which we have seen in the database analysis is, is very realistic. All right, so, and I encourage you, you can, you can use your own, this is not something that is made up or anything or fantasy land, right? This is, you can essentially go into your own tracker program even if you have very little hands just for your filter for less than 15 dollars or filter between 15 and 100 dollars and then create an alias and just run those hands through your database from all the opponents you have maybe set the set a filter for 30 30 vpip and lower so you don't consider recreations that might have some crazy outlier stats that will skew the results so we only want to approach this against regulars and you very likely going to be seeing that I mean, against recreations, we don't want to be three betting four or five suited, right? Or queen seven off. We just go straight for value. We play very exploitative poker anyway. So, um, 
And then look for yourself. What is the average four to three bet you get from cutoff button hijack for 40 big blinds, 50 big blinds? And I guarantee you're going to be around 55, 60%, 62%. Of course, these numbers might deviate depending on what stakes you play, but barely it's going to be at 50% or even lower. If it gets lower, we don't actually want to three bet bluff uh, that much as the solver wants us to do. So let's have a look in to our uh, response here with queen eight off so now of course if we compare that with the gto uh range we had in the, in the previous sim here remember uh okay so again this is the preferred range that we assume so we unlock the we lock this cutoff range with that response against the big blind and we want to see what is the big blind now what does he want to play what kind of range so we see now that the solver actually wants to go crazy. It starts three betting a lot of these suited um, two gappers and also way more with these off suited Broadway, uh, off suited high card hands, which makes a lot of sense. Still, though, let's look at DVs. We see once again uh, seven six suited. Um, <clears throat> yeah, makes a round compared to losing the big blind uh, six point two. Uh, sorry, zero point six two big blinds three betting also makes around 0 0.6 if we compare that with the ev against the gto range remember uh yeah here we go the seven six suited versus our more um yeah tight assumptions that people fold a little bit more and what is interesting here you see that actually um it's a little little bit worse right remember here we had 404 and here we we lose 411 which is like 0 0.05 or 0 0.005 right uh in 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 big blinds so almost neglectable but you might be confused ben you increased the four to three bet so why now do we actually start losing a tiny 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 bit tiny bit more with seven six students and three betting well, the reason is, and this is the way we uh, created the range, the response for cutoff. Um, yes, we increased the, the forward equity and actually only to 52%. I think, again, in reality, those queen jack offs are not going to be called this queen eight, king eight units. So even pocket threes, pocket fours might be folding. Uh, it's maybe an a6 suited more often, a7 suited more often. Uh, which will then end up our um, 43 around 55 percent but also actually <laughs> accidentally we increased the four bets so because remember before that that was the, the 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 purple ones are the four bets you see actually here ace two suited very little four bet jamming uh we decreased king queen and king jack suited but we added uh, full frequency queens jacks and tens uh we added full frequent high frequency nines and also more pocket kings and um so yeah actually our four bit uh, frequency increased by half percentage or something so that actually of course uh, decreases the v of three betting with seven six suited uh, insignificantly by like 0 0.05 something but in case it has created some confusion again if we would run uh, let people not four bit jam those uh, king queen suited king, which i have barely see i see people calling it maybe one two or five percent people are five bit four bit jamming and also ace five suited you will see it but not 100 percent of the time so uh, ace queen suited i think ace queen offs i think is very realistic uh, some people call some people fold so i think it's very realistic to assume that ace queen off always jams ace queen suited is calling um so but yeah if we reduce it even by 0 0.5 percent you will see that now seven six suited of course also becomes better three betting against the population than also calling right um so then where we we start uh, three betting seven six suited and you see it already here where let's say a 9-6 suited, 9-5 suited, even 9-3 suited doesn't have as great a playability as 7-6 suited, but they still have decent playability, but they still want to start 3-betting very heavily against very realistic assumptions, to be honest, right? So here again, to wrap it up, um, yeah, king 6 off, queen 6 off, super, super close in EV, but if we factor in the human component, then component, then 
certainly it's a uh, calling is outperforming three betting. So just this as a takeaway, um, don't underestimate the playability you have post up in three bet pod. You're still going to be facing a bunch of calls, and that's where um, the pseudo connectors are going to be very powerful. Of course, it sucks to three bet fold, but in terms, it, it's just all about equity. People say, yeah, but this hand is so beautiful. Well. There's just a number. It just stands for a number. Nothing more. Those cards, the beautiful six, five, and hearts, is just the front end of the back end, the number, the equity. So also with queen eight off, you three bet forward also in reason. And with six five suited, actually you also deny a lot of equity. Remember those ace eight offs you fold out, like very like high equity hands or seven eight suited or nine seven suited even some of these suited aces that people fold in reality a six a seven suited which really pushes a lot of dv with that you have with seven six suited so to wrap it up i think it really shows and if you look look in a lot of these sims especially it wants if it wants to do a frequency play right like three betting queen at all 30 percent of the time and it never really favors one option over the other it shows you like it shows you ace is 100% three bet right so it's clearly better it's clearly better three betting than calling however when it starts mixing a queen and off a queen seven off 50 50 or 30% three betting because dvs are very close and then what the solver does is that looks at the right frequencies so it picks the hands where the ev is a little bit better in three bit bluffing but also make sure you're not getting out of line so you don't three bet queen it off 100 of the time or queen seven off 100 of the time what we see though is that at some point now if we make the response ranges from cutoff against the three bit a, more, a little more realistic we let him fold a little more often let him fob it a little bit less we actually see that the evs are um yeah uh, are staying relatively close to each other and therefore um, it's nothing where you really need to worry that um, if, if whatever strategy you choose here and yeah not over complicate things and especially if you don't feel comfortable queen five off i find it very irresponsible to recommend someone that might be on the low stakes or mid stakes there's a billion different spots you can study that will gain way more ev than trying to you know increase your win rate um, to study so many spots with in three bed pots with hands like queen five queen six off where at the end of the day you're going to be generating like 0, 0.0 something more or just 0. Point whatever one or two big blinds more i this is not effective and efficient studying so i hope i could shed some light on this very widely debated topic and yeah don't let anyone confuse you i'm not saying it's the perfect range again um this course is not made to teach you gto poker it's made to teach you how to um, learn the game on a, in a very fundamental way but also then showing you spots where you need to break the rules or you can break the rules in order to make it more realistic the way population really plays i hope you guys have enjoyed that piece of content and then best of luck for scoop and all the crazy series that is going on see you at the tables and probably also see you on twitch i'm going to be streaming a little more often now also doing the scoop really excited to see you guys there and then see you guys next time